Hello, today we're going to work on solving quadratic equations by completing the square, and I will refer to this as CTS. I want to remind you that when we're solving quadratic equations, we know the equations are quadratic when they have x squared in them and nothing higher, and that all quadratic equations have two solutions. The uh, method that is easiest is to take square roots, but not all equations are set up to take square roots, but you did see some yesterday that were. We can also factor. Factoring is a skill that you use all the time. We practiced it first because it is so prevalent in mathematics. So for quadratics, you know you always start with the co uh, greatest common factor. If there's two terms, you do a difference of two squares. If there's three terms, it's called a trinomial, and we apply the AC method. Now, yesterday we also worked on quadratic formula. That method always works, but sometimes it can be quite messy, and a lot of times it's dependent on you having a calculator. Complete the square also always works, but we only want to use it when it's neat. When it's neat, it's faster than the quadratic formula. I just have to convince you to like it, because sometimes people shy away from it. So before we actually do the... Um, Completing the square process, let's do some feeder scales. If I ask you to square x plus 9, then that means do x plus 9, x plus 9. And what I want to do is be able to say, oh, so first is x squared, outer is 9x, inner is 9x, and last is 81. And when I condense, I get x squared plus 18x plus 81. Now, guys, our goal is let's quit doing all this if possible, and let me show you how to move more quickly. So you can look at the original binomial squared and say if you square the first, let's see if I can change colors. If you square the first one, that goes here. If you multiply the first times the second and get 9x, double it and put it here. If you square the second one, that goes here. So let me show you on this next one how to do the quick trick. So you're going to square the first, and that's x squared. You're going to do the first times the second, that's negative 13x, doubled, and that's negative 26x. Now square the second one, and 13 squared is positive 169. Guys, the first sign will always match the sign that was in the original problem, in the original binomial. The second sign, though, is always positive because when you're squaring something, it doesn't matter if you're squaring a positive or a negative. It turns out positive, okay? Now, if you don't believe me that it works that way, let's see if I can erase some of these extra marks here. Notice if I go back and do it the old school way, I'm going to have x minus 13 times x minus 13. When I use FOIL method, first is x squared, outer is 13 x, minus 13x, inner is minus 13x, and last is plus 169. Notice when I condense the negative 13x is I get the negative 26x and the rest of this is the same. So if you know how to square binomial quickly, it helps you to go in the reverse order. Complete the square requires that you go in the reverse order. So look, can you tell that the x squared must have come from squaring x first plus must have come from putting plus here. 25 must have come from putting 5 there. Now, if you check using what we just learned, again, first squared is x squared. Then you do first times second, that's 5x, doubled is 10x. Second squared is 25, and that is what we got first. So again, we're checking by multiplying it out quickly, but what you really wanted was the x plus 5 quantity squared. You're writing a trinomial as the square of a binomial. So we're making squares. That's what complete the square has to deal with. So on this one, you're going to say, oh, this x squared must be x first. 
the minus sign must be minus right here. 121's square root is 11. All right, so let's see if I did it right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to check it by squaring quickly. So first squared is x squared. First times second is negative 11x doubled is negative 22x. Second squared is positive 121, and that is what I had for the original problem. So now I know I did x minus 11 squared correctly. Now, not all trinomials are already perfect squares, but for the ones that we're going to generate in today's work, you're on purpose going to generate perfect squares. So let's talk about how to um, take these more quickly. So on these, I want you to complete the blank and form a square. So complete the blank and form a square. We um, condense that into complete the square. But look, guys, this x tells me I'm going to have an x here. This plus tells me I'm going to have a plus here. Now, what you do, guys, is take half of the middle term. So that would be half of 14 is 7. And then you square the 7 and get 49. All right? So if you wanted to check, wait a minute, what's she doing? doing? Does that work? x squared is here. x times 7 is 7x doubled is there. 7 squared is here. So see, I'm constantly coming back to how you square a binomial quickly. So now look, x squared tells me put an x here. This minus sign tells me put a minus here. Go to the middle and say, well, 20 is halved and you get 10. And then square the 10 and get a 100. So I'm completing the blank and making a square. So I'm completing the square. Now on 3 and 4, I can do completing the square with fractions, and I'll show you, but I'm going to reiterate, we complete the square when it's neat, and generally when this number is odd, that's when we say, okay, quadratic formula would be the neater method. So we'll do this a tiny bit, but not a lot. So you're supposed to half the 3, so that means you get a fraction, 3 halves, square the fraction, so square the 3, square the 2. So it's doable, but that's the point at which it, completing the square gets messy. So it's at that point that I say, no, I'd prefer the quadratic formula. That's why we're not going to emphasize this a lot. So I see x. I see minus. Half of 5 is just 5 over 2. Square it. So 25 over 4. So we're just working on the skill before we actually solve equations. Now, guys, you cannot complete the square if you lead with anything but a 1x squared. So you've got to factor the 3 out and just put it in front. All right? When you do that, what you'll have is um, 3x squared minus 8x. And you might go, wait a minute. Look, 3x squared was what I started with. Minus 8x is what I had in the middle. Now you're going to put a blank to complete the square. Now we're back to saying, oh, so x squared makes an x here, minus makes a minus here, half of 8 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. Okay? Now there's one more thing you need to see that's different. Now I have to say 3 times 16 is 48. So it's all a balancing act. Um, on the next one, the first thing we're going to see is that you cannot complete the square with a 5x squared. So I factor the 5 out, and I put it first on the next two steps. Now when I factor the 5 out, I know this is 5x squared, and I had. So 5 times what gives me 10x? It'd be 5 plus 2x. Now I'll add a space to complete the square. Now we go back, and we say, well, the x squared here tells me to have an x Plus here tells me to put a plus, and then you say half of this 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. Put that there. The last thing you need to do is say, oh, it's 5 times 1 gives me 5. 
So again, we're working on skills because then these skills are going to apply directly to our equation solving. So I cannot complete this square as long as I have 4x squared. So I factor the 4 to the front. So 4x squared goes here, and it's going to be minus 4 times what gives me 24x? 6x. And then add in a blank to complete the square. So this x and this minus tell me to go to my binomial and start as x minus. Now take half of this 6 and put 3, and then square the 3 and put 9. And I'll bring all this together for you when we actually get to equation solving. 4 times 9 is 36. You're going to use all of these little bits and pieces when we solve equations. So on the next one, negative x squared is still not okay. So you have to factor out a negative 1 here and here. So you can write negative 1 or you can just write negative. Now let's uh, multiply through Negative x squared is here. Negative times what gives you a negative 2x? Do you see you'd have to multiply a negative times a positive 2x to go back up to the top and have a negative 2x? And then you add a blank to complete the square. This x squared and this plus tells me to go to x plus here. Half of 2x, half of 2 would be 1, and then 1 squared is 1. And then you've got to go, oh, look, so I have to say a negative times that 1. So it's actually a negative 1 that goes there. All right? So I'm just trying to get you to see what the pattern is with what you're doing with the numbers. Now we're going to complete the square. So, guys, when you complete the square, the first thing is to say you've got to have the letters on the left and the plain numbers move to the right. So my first step is to say x squared minus 8x plus a blank to complete the square, move the 17 over plus a blank to complete the square, okay? Now we're going to say, okay, so this is where you look at the x squared and the minus sign, and you say that's x minus, and you need to square that, okay? So I'm going to say half of the 8 is 4, and 4 squared goes back up here as 16. Now, guys, you've added 16 to the left, so you've got to add 16 to the right. So then I say, well, 17 and 16 adds up to 33, and I condense both the left-hand side down to x minus 4 squared, and I've condensed the right-hand side down to 33. Why do we complete the square? Guys, the whole point of completing the square is to create an equation where you now can take square roots of both sides. So I can say plus or minus. got to squish that in because I didn't make space. So the square root of x minus 4 squared is just x minus 4. The square root of 33 cannot be broken down. There's no perfect square that goes into it. So all I have to do is add the 4 over, and I get my two conjugate answers. They're both real, and they're conjugates of each other. So let's do the same thing on the next problem. So I'm going to start out with x squared plus 12x plus a space to complete the square. Move the negative 3 over and add a space to balance the equation. Now I start to condense. So I need on the left side to have something squared, and on the right side I need one single number. So I see x and plus, so I start there. Then I say 12x is my middle term, half the 12 and get 6, then square the 6 and put it back up here. If you've added 36 to the left, that's what fills in the blank on the right. And then, well, goodness gracious, yesterday I gave you two problems with 85s. Today I've given you two problems with 33s. Just a coincidence. I don't know how that's happened twice in a row. So 36 minus 3 on the top row skinnies down to 33 on the second row of the problem. Now the point of complete the square is that you've created an equation 
where you can take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to say the square root of x plus 6 squared is x plus 6. We've already said that the square root of 33 won't break down. So now I get negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 33. And I'm done. I've gotten two real answers, and they're conjugates of each other. Okay, so in the next problem, I'm making you work for it a little bit more on the front end. So I'm going to have x squared. So I've got minus 11x. Pull the minus 3x over and get minus 14x. Now, guys, I've asked you to complete the square. So let's just go ahead and leave the letters on the left. But let's pull um, the 39. Go ahead and pull it to the right side. So I'm going to have to do 15 minus 39. And I believe that's negative 24. 15 minus 39. It is. It's negative 24. So now add a space to balance the equation. Now it's time to start condensing both sides. So you're going to condense the trinomial on the left to x minus, and then you're going to condense um, to one number on the right, okay? So I'm going to say half of 14 is 7. 7 squared is 49. If I add 49 to the left, I add 49 to the right. Now on the right, I've got negative 24 plus 49, and I'm putting that on my calculator, and I get 25. Oh, this was going to be a pretty one. So again, why do we complete the square? So we can take square roots of both sides, just like we did yesterday. So on the left, I get x minus 7. And the plus or minus the square root of 25, you know, is just plus or minus 5. So add the 7 over so it's between the equal sign and the plus or minus. Now you're going to get two nice, neat answers. You'll have x equals 7 plus 5 and x equals 7 minus 5. I love completing the square when it's neat. When it's not neat, I just do quadratic formula. All right, so same thing on this one. Move the 3x squared over, so 4x squared minus 3x squared is x squared. Move the negative 9x over, so it'll be 7x plus 9x, plus a space to complete the square. And then move the 64 over, so it's negative 64 plus. So again, we're ready to condense. So the left-hand side becomes a perfect square, and the right-hand side becomes a single number. So I see an x and a plus. Half of 16 is 8, and 8 squared is 64. If I add 64 to the left, I add 64 to the right. And plus or minus 64 adds up to 0. Oh, this one's going to be nice, too. Why do we complete the square? So we can take square roots of both sides. So the square root of the left side is x plus 8. The square root of 0 is just 0. So plus or minus 0 is just equal to 0, right? So what's happening is, guys, you're saying negative 8 plus or minus 0. But negative 8 plus 0 is negative 8, and negative 8 minus 0 is negative 8. And so instead of writing negative 8 twice, I'm going to say that negative 8 is a double root. So remember yesterday, guys, we said using um, the idea of the, um, what am I trying to say? The idea of the discriminant, if the discriminant is positive, you get two separate real answers that are different from each other. If the discriminant is zero, you get one real answer that's repeated. And if the discriminant is negative, you're going to get two non-real answers. So here we go again. I've got x squared on the left. 18x needs to travel over, so that's minus 10x. And then um, I'm going to make a space to complete the square. 34 needs to travel over. So 5 minus 34 is negative 29. And I'm going to make my space to balance the equation. Now I'm going to begin to condense my two sides. So the left-hand side condenses to a perfect square. The right-hand side condenses to a single number. I see an x and a minus. And half of 10 is 5. 
and 5 squared is 25. So if I add 25 to the left, I add 25 to the right. I see that negative 9 and 25 are negative 4. Oh, the discriminant's going to be negative. Why do we complete the square? So we can take square roots of both sides. So the square root of the left. Oh, so look, guys, the square root of negative 4 is plus or minus 2i. So as I mentioned, add your 5 over, by the way. As I mentioned ye uh, yesterday and just now, if your discriminant, which means the single number you get down to under the radical, if your discriminant is negative, you're going to have two non-real solutions that are conjugates of each other. All right, so number six is where things start to pick up in difficulty. I don't have 1x squared, right? I have 3x squared. So I'm going to have to do a little wizardry here. First, I'm going to say, let me do 3x, I uh, don't know what I'm doing there, sorry. 3x squared plus 6x, and let me add the 10 over, okay? Now, what I need to do is deal with this 3, and I do that by factoring it out, okay? So that's going to give me 3 times x squared and 3 times 2x. And again, you might be going 2x. Remember, 3x squared is here. 3 times 2x is 6x is here, okay? So add a blank to complete the square, and that's equal to 10 plus a blank for balancing. Now I'm going to start to condense. So my 3 is still there. So I see an x and a plus, so I write down x plus. Half of 2 is 1, and I'm going to put a 1 here. Now this is where it's tricky. You have to say 3 times 1 is 3. That's what you've actually added to the total of the left-hand side. So then I get 13 right here. So that was, that was different from what we um, have done on the earlier problems. Now what I have to do is I have to say x plus 1 squared equals 13 over 3. Now I'm ready to take square roots of both sides. So the square root of the left is plus or minus the square root of the right. To do the square root of the right, do the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. Now, I know on the bottom I'm going to get x plus 1, and I know that I need to subtract the 1 over, so I'm starting to trim steps to help you out. Now, I know that this fraction I'm going to have to multiply by square root 3, square root 3. So I'm trying to help you not have to take so much paper steps. So when you multiply across the top, 13 times 3 is 39. So you've got square root 13, square root 3 is square root 39. Square root 3 times square root 3 on the bottom is square root 9, and square root 9 is plain 3. So there's your answer. Let's try one last problem. On number 7, it's the same thing. I'll walk you through those steps. The first thing I notice is you're going to have 2x squared, I'm going to pull the plus 5x over, so negative 29 plus 5 is negative 24x. And then I'm going to pull the 82 over, so 10 plus 82 is 92. Now, I'm going to say, oh goodness, I can't complete the square with the 2 here. So I factor out the 2 on the next two steps, okay? That's going to give me x squared minus 12x. And again, that was 2x squared minus 24x. That's what I had on the first step. Plus a blank to complete the square equals 92 plus a blank to balance the equation. Now it's time for me to condense my left-hand side. So I see x and minus. Half of 12 is 6. And that's supposed to be squared to get 36. Guys, look, 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 look. You have to say 2 times the 36 is actually 72. That's the tricky part. And then 92 plus 72 is 164. So what I have to do, guys, I 
have to divide the 164 by 2. Sorry about the announcements in the background. Now I'm ready to take both square roots. Services. 82 does not break down. I thought it did, but it does not because I was getting ready to break it down and make it good square root times bad square root. So all I've left to do is add the 6 over, and there you go. So we have a worksheet that follows this lesson. Good luck, and let me know what you need help on.